1985 or thereabouts, when the first case of HIV AIDS was reported in the world, there was confusion and fear. And for the next 10 years or so, people live with suspicion, suspicion among different colors and races of people, suspicions about countries, stigma was the order of the day, and for a considerable length of time, dead bodies were brought in polythene bags to be buried immediately. Perhaps because of that fear and stigma, the world has paid in terms of the numbers of HIV-related death and infections. Perhaps if there had been less fear, less stigma, AIDS would not have left the destruction it has left in the world. Some people behaved as if by greeting an African or a certain person of a certain race, then you would get HIV AIDS. It affected tourism and business. Today, the world finds itself in almost a similar situation. Coronavirus. WHO, through its Director General, says the worst enemy to the world today is not the coronavirus itself, but fear and stigma, rumors, suspicions. This is likely going to make the coronavirus spread, kill people, leave economic ruin more than the, the disease itself. The reaction to it, the behavior. And that is why yesterday I was a proud Kenyan when the president came out and issued executive order number two that action alone from His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta showed that the country was now with leadership that was telling its people, we know we are with coronavirus, we know the dangers, and we are concerned. Before that, the government had behaved in a manner to leave citizens of this country with no choice but to conclude that there was no government. And therefore, we must hail the president for coming up. But we must ask the president to do a, lot more, a little more than he has done. Kenyans were worried that we were allowing in people from China when other countries were taking precautions. That made Kenyans believe this, the government was not serious. Today, many governments in the world are doing everything possible. It is for this reason again that I congratulate the president for coming out with executive order number two. People were asking the president very serious questions. Social media was awash with nothing but fear, hatred. It was going to be difficult for Kenyans to interact with the Chinese in this country. We need the Chinese. They have given us loans. We are seeing the evidence. There may be a few questions about it, but we are seeing the evidence. They are working for us in this country. We are happy. But we are going to get to a situation where Kenyans are not going to relate well. And because of that, this morning, we must tell government that people were scared because of certain things which government must do something about. Kenyans are in Wuhan, China. They are stuck there. Kenyans will not be happy when they see other countries. America evacuated its citizens from a cruise ship. Two days ago, South Africa has ordered the same for 199 of its citizens in China. Other smaller countries, I think like Djibouti, have done the same. That will still leave Kenyans with question mark. 
the government must also do enough to convince Kenyans that in the event of an outbreak, we have sufficient facilities for quarantine. It was worrying to Kenyans that we were told we only had a capacity of 11 beds at Kenyatta National Hospital and that we were taking another 30 days or thereabouts to come up with another 120 beds at Mbagadi. Mr. President, that is not encouraging even when you have ordered Mbagadi to be completed in seven days. Kenyans want to see a fresh new facility constructed somewhere so that if there is an outbreak and God forbid we are able to handle even a thousand people across the country. I'm happy with the task force headed by Mutai Kagwe, the new CS in charge of health. Mutai Kagwe has a record of performance. We recall his performance. We recall his midwifing and bathing IT in this country. We recall M-Pesa. And I have no doubt in my mind that Mutai Kagwe is up to the task and that he will move with speed with the task force that the president has appointed to ensure Kenyans and restore confidence. But I want to ask the president to beef up the Mutai team by bringing in men that Kenyans have confidence in. I want to see Kibicho and Matiangi in that team. I want to see General Mwadad in that team. Kenyans will have more confidence if the military takes a front row. We want to see the military, we want to see KDF playing a prominent role. We want to see a whole new center somewhere constructed with the aid of NYS, with the aid of the military, with the aid of public works and the rest. This is not something to contract to people to make billions. Mr. President, we are happy with what you have done, but we are asking you to do more. Kenyans watched as the government did nothing, as the government said it was okay for Chinese to come in. But as they were watching, Israel was turning back a plane carrying Korean tourists, Koreans. As they watched, another country allowed a plane of tourists carrying tourists to dock, to land, but ask them to be quarantined for 15 days at the airport. They refused and the plane took them back. Today, we do not want to blame our government. Blame has never helped anybody. In fact, the greatest nation on earth today is bringing shame upon itself as the Democrats in America bash Trump for not doing enough about coronavirus. This is not the time to bash anybody. This is the time for every country, every nation in the world to pull together to fight this scourge. This is the time for countries to work together. And I'm highly discouraged by what, by what China is doing, by the lack of transparency, by not wanting to work with WHO. The world must force China to be transparent, to work with the WHO, as we in our own small ways, together with the WHO, pull together to ensure that we deal a blow to this scourge that could destroy the, the world in terms of death, loss of lives, and in terms of the economy. Finally, I must repeat, the worst enemy today is not the disease itself. It is the fear, it is the rumors, it is the stigma. We must do everything possible to avoid stigma, Kenyans must interact with the Chinese in this country with respect as brothers and sisters. But government must not make it difficult for Kenyans. Government must make Kenyans love Chinese and work with them without giving them room for rumors and stigma. To do that, government must be transparent. Government must make moves such as the one the president has made. Government must do a lot more and engage its citizens. And everything government does about coronavirus must be that which enhances confidence in the people that the government is in charge. If we go that way, together as Kenyans and the world community, we shall manage coronavirus, which we must.